At Woolpit in Thedwestry, where the foundlings came to stay, within the reign of Stephen, as the chroniclers say, five winters and five summers passed, and in the autumn of that year, as Michaelmas was drawing near, the swine turned out on common land to fatten on the acorn mast. The air, said Alice, felt the same as when the two green children came. And in Sir Richard's hall she saw that Agnes was grown taller now. A wench now stood there, tresses fair, which tumbled as she tossed her head. So men who saw her quietly said those things, perhaps best left to thought. Yet Agnes, for their part they'd find, was wanton, never seemed to mind if when pursued that she was caught. They also said that she was rude and impudent. They tattled too. Such pious folk as disapproved told Alice and her husband John how shamelessly their girl went on. And Alice noted this as well. Her foundling daughter's once green skin was now the same as any one born under England's kindly sun. Pale in winter, rose in spring, and berry brown in summer's blaze to fading bronze of autumn days. So little wonder, after time, a man came courting her one day. One Richard Barr, the annals say, a royal courtier of King's Lynn, who swept her up without delay. She married him, then moved away, bore him children, kept his hall. And then the story ends, is all. So here we leave this mystery, with Agnes, Alice, husband John, consigned to myth or history, since all of them are dead and gone. Thedwestry too, its ancient name unused nowadays and barely known, with only Woolpit left its claim as place to which the children came. Green children found in Woolpit once. Onisoir qui mal y pense.